Could you to Quinn Wade coming to y'all with that instant analysis on analysisplaygroundcom and on YouTube? We're going to talk about the Indiana Pacers picking up their first W against the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are winless in preseason. We're going to talk about how Cleveland was able to get a 31 to 28 first quarter lead. And then they was able to basically lose it in the second quarter because Indiana had a 41 to 39 quarter in the second quarter. And it was able to continue that success in the third quarter where they was able to have a 32 to 18 third quarter. And then Cleveland was able to have a 29 to 28 fourth quarter. But by then the game was already decided and over and they were, the Pacers were already up by double figures with really no threat of the Cleveland Cavaliers making a comeback attempt. And we're going to cover the winning team first. Pascal Siakam, seven points, negative eight and plus minus. One personal foul, five rebounds. One or two from three, three or six from the field. Aaron Neesmith, three or four from the field. Two or three from three, two or two from the free throw line. He did have two rebounds, one assist, one steal, one block, one turnover. Plus seven and plus minus, he did get double figures with 10 points. And then we're going to talk about Miles Turner, 5 of 10 from the field, 0 of 3 from the three-point line, 2 of 3 from the free throw line, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 block, 4 personal fouls, plus 3 and plus minus 12 points. That was the best they had from the starters offensively. Andrew didn't really show up tonight offensively, 1 of 4 from the field, three, 1 of 3 from the three-point line. Um, one rebound, one assist, one personal foul, negative three and plus minus three points. And Tyrese Halliburton only played 18 minutes tonight, and that was enough um, for the team to still win. Three or four from the field, one of three from the three-point line, one rebound, four assists, two steals, two personal fouls, one one well, one personal foul, two turnovers, negative two and plus minus seven points. OB Toppin, six points, two of five from the field, or two from the three-point line. Three rebounds, three assists, one steal, one personal foul, plus six and plus minus. Swidder, uh, one of six, well, one of eight from the field, one of seven from three. Um, zeros across the board, plus two and plus minus three points. Freeman got a couple of good dunks in there. He finished three of six from the field, one of one from the three-point line, two of two from the free throw line. He did also have nine rebounds to go along with that one assist, one block, one turnover, plus three and plus minus nine points. Walker, three of three from the field. Two or two from the three-point line, four four from the free throw line, four rebounds, one assist, zeros other than that, plus 18 and plus minus 12 points. Jackson, one of three from the field. He didn't have any free throws or three-point attempts, but he did have three assists, one well, three rebounds, one assist, three blocks, one turnover, um, zero personal fouls, and he was also plus seven and plus minus two points. Um, James the Giant Wiseman did get a couple dunks in there um, in an alley oop. Four of six from the field. He also was all one from three. Didn't attempt any free throws, um, but he did have 10 rebounds and eight points and one personal foul and was plus four, plus minus. TJ McConnell still showing that he's one of their best bench players. Four of 10 from the field, all one from three. Um, he did have two rebounds, five assists, and three steals. Two turnovers, one personal foul, plus 10 and plus minus eight points. Brown, two or two from the field. He also had one rebound, one steal, and he also had three personal fouls, negative four and plus minus four points. Benedict Matherin was the highest scorer on this team, and he only played 19 minutes and still was able to shoot eight or 12 from the field, five or eight from three, four or four from the free throw line. He also had three rebounds, one assist, um, plus 15 and plus minus. He ended up with 25 points. Um, Shepard, one of five from the field. He also was all two from the three-point line, one of two from the free throw line, one rebound, one assist, one block, plus two and plus minus three points. Jackson, one of two from the field. He also was zero from a three and from the free throw line, one rebound, negative four and plus minus two points. And Newton, three of seven from the field, two of four from three. He also had no free throw attempts, two rebounds, three assists. Two turnovers, one personal foul, plus four and plus minus eight points. And they shot 49% from the field, 48 of 97. They shot 16 to 39 from three, 41% above average. They also shot well at the free throw line, 17 to 19, only missing two, 89% from the field. They also was able to get 51 rebounds, 28 assists. Um, they had nine steals, seven blocks, 
12 turnovers, 14 personal fouls. Um, and then you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers. Dean Wade was able to start tonight, 23 minutes, three or six from the field, um, five rebounds, three assists, one steal, three personal fouls, negative two and plus minus nine points. Tyson, five or seven from the field, one of three, one on one from the three point line, six rebounds, four assists, two steals, one block, four turnovers, one personal foul, negative 10 and plus minus 11 points. Isaac Aquero, he came out looking to score in a variety of ways, and he was able to accomplish that, although he only took six attempts. Four of six from the field, one of two from three, or of two from the free throw line. He did have two rebounds, four assists, two steals, and he had one block, one personal foul, negative nine plus minus nine points. And Jared Allen, six of eight from the field, really was able to finish, was able to get to the free throw line, one of two from the free throw line. He did grab six rebounds, three of them was offensive, four assists, one turnover, negative two and plus minus 13 points. Jerome, thir well, 15 points, five of 14 from the field, two of seven from three. He was also three of three from the free throw line, did grab four rebounds and had eight assists, um, two turnovers, one personal foul, negative two and plus minus. Nance, all of two from the field, all of one from three, one rebound, one assist, plus two and plus minus, zero points. JT Thor was able to get some dunks in there, but he didn't really shoot the ball well all night. Two of seven from the field, all of one from three, also was one and two from the free throw line. Two rebounds, plus one and plus minus five points. Um, George Niang, five of nine, two of four from three. Um, he was able to really score in different ways, too. Three rebounds, one turnover, four personal fouls, negative five plus minus 12 points. Um, Thompson, two of four from the field, um, five rebounds, one assist, two turnovers, um, negative 18 and plus minus four points. He did exactly what you wanted him to do, was able to bang, was able to get rebounds, was able to put the ball in the basket when they passed it to him and just finished the shot, even though he missed a couple. Um, Gillard, um, a one-on-one -on -one from the field, he did have two assists, Plus two and plus minus three points. Smith, two or two from the field, uh, one or two from the free throw line, one steal, five points. Um, Bernard, three of eight from the field, three of seven from the three point line, two rebounds, one assist, one personal foul, negative two and plus minus 11 points. Um, Porter, six of 10 from the field, two or three from the three point line, four assists, one steal, uh, one block, negative seven and plus minus 14 points. Trevor's three of eight from the field, all of three from the three-point line, um, six rebounds, two assists, one steal, one turnover, two personal fouls, negative eight and plus minus six points. No Evan Bowley tonight. No Imani Bates as he's going through surgery recovery. Um, no Darius Garland. No Karis LeVert. No Donovan Mitchell. No Matt Strews. I did have to mention that because they still scored 117 points. Tonight, even though most of their best players didn't even play, they still shot 47 of 93, 50% from the field. They did shoot average from three, 12 of 34, 35%. They only shot 64% from the free throw line, 11 to 17. They still did get their 42 rebounds. They still had 34 assists because they pushed the tempo real fast and was really gunning for some shots. They did have eight steals, two blocks, 12 turnovers, and 13 personal fouls. But without having a starters play any minutes at all, that's a really successful game plan and a really good idea um, for Kenny Atkinson. They really was able to score well while still being competitive, and they did have the lead in the first quarter. So it would I take away that this bench is looking better. They're looking more confident. They have more weapons. They have more things they can do. They have the length. They have the size on the bench and they have guys that are confident and feel like they can play. And that's what you need to have if you're trying to be a contender in the Eastern Conference or a contender in general. And you have to be able to be competition even when things don't go your way, even when guys are out, you still have to be next man up mentality. And I feel like the Cleveland Cavaliers did that tonight and it was just very impressive how they was able to keep up with a per what a team that matches up well against them and they might have to see in the playoffs and this is just a confidence builder for their bench and it makes sense you know for them and the indy they got the job done you know they played their game they played their style they was able to still show you that they still have a lot of talent a lot of floor spacing a lot of probers and they do have, know how to you know score in transition and create those type of opportunities and they still showing that their system works Rick Carlisle has always been a genius to me 
when it comes to coaching and getting the best out of his role players. And I think that we've seen that tonight with their bench, and we've seen them try a lot of different things tonight, and that we've seen their starters show that they can gel with guys on the bench like they showed last year. Now it's just more guys that they can try to win trust with and be able to build that bond as a team so that way they can have a better run next year, hopefully, because you never really know what's going to happen. And just like Pascal, see how come falling out the air and falling right to your team and being a perfect fit almost for a team like this, it just makes sense to why they just can be one piece away from being a legitimate championship contender in the Eastern Conference and in the NBA in general. And they're very young, and they can accomplish that goal within two to three years probably. And I wouldn't be surprised just because they just play that well against great competition, and it seems to bang, bring out the best in them. And I like what I see. And I've been liking what I've seen from Indiana for about two years, especially since they made that trade to get Tyrese Halliburton, and then they was able to get an all-NBA slash all-star big man in Pascal Siakam anyway. So it ended up working out for the Kings and the Pacers, and it made the league more competitive at the same time in both conference. And that's what we want to see, more parity, more exciting games, more competitive games. And I see a game like this being a perfect example of that. And it just shows you the growth of the league, the skill of the league, the talent of the league. And it's just showing you that the modern NBA is just on a different level when it comes to those things compared to back in the day. And this is why guys are making their name and showing their style and influencing the game to the best of their ability. And it's just making the game better in general. Other than that, comment, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell for more analysis. I got another video coming up today, which is Bucks versus Lakers. That's going to be an instant analysis. I already gave y'all basically four videos today already. That's going to be the fifth. And that's going to be a wrap up for the end of the day for me for today. But if you want to see more content, obviously you want to subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you already did that, check out my videos that you may have missed today throughout the year. And throughout the weeks that I've been uploading, I upload a lot, to, you know, and you probably missed something just because of that. And this is just a reminder for you guys to still check out videos you might have missed throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year that you really wanted to see. But you might have been busy. You might have other stuff to do and you just have time now to check it out. And thanks for supporting the channel to the best of y'all ability and just supporting it in general. And I'll see you guys a little bit later today.